Hey everybody, Dustin Dales here. I'm downtown Omaha because tonight at UNO, they're doing a really cool event. They're bringing in Adam Beach. You've seen him on a ton of stuff. He's, he's been on uh, his Suicide Squad. He's got a movie out now called The Hostels. Uh, he was in Wind Talkers, Flags of Our Fathers. A lot of great stuff that you've seen this guy in because he's a great actor and he's got a great story. And hopefully we can dive in a little bit to that today. Adam, how you doing, man? Pleasure to meet you, buddy. Pleasure to meet you, man. Uh, first of all, we were talking a little bit downstairs. Uh, how you liking Omaha so far? It's first time here, right? Yeah, Omaha is great. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the information of Warren Buffett kind of helps out <laughs> this area, which mm -hmm. is nice. But uh, everybody seems pretty cool. Hotel is great. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're hanging out here at the Magnolia Hotel. If you haven't been here, it is a nice hotel. He, he got himself a good room, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, now, let's just start off with talking about the movie that you got out right now, Hostels. Uh, tell me a little bit about that movie. Uh, the movie Hostels follows uh, Christian Bale in his journey of delivering uh, um, West Studi to his burial ground because he's dying. And in that process, he kind of, you know, finds, uh, uh, he makes amends with the struggle he has with uh, um, the battle of, you know, the, the military and Indians, you know, because back then it's, you know, Indians were ones that you feared but hated at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, was there a lot of research or anything you had to do for this role or was this kind of something they gave you a script and you kind of had an idea in the back of your head of what to do with it? Yeah, when everything comes to um, that period of, like the 1800s or uh, early 1900s, <clears throat> I have a sense of of what that history is because I've learned it growing up. But for my main importance is I was playing a Cheyenne warrior, so I wanted to immerse myself in the the teachings and the culture of of the Cheyenne, and they have a, a, an amazing horse culture. That, that is uh, something everybody should learn about mm -hmm. when it comes to the Cheyennes. So I hope they get to see that in a movie. But, you know, when it comes to making movies these days, they, they um, limit themselves on, on teaching the audience those details of that culture, because you can only tell so much. So we were able to tell so much, but that's one thing I'd, I'd encourage people to look into is the Cheyenne horse culture. Now, I, a lot of the, the movies that you do, you play different, you're from different tribes of, of Indians. I mean, you had the Navajo um, and Wind Talkers, and then mm -hmm. this one, the Cheyenne. Is, were you familiar with the, the different cultures uh, growing up? Mm, well, growing up, you kind of get an idea that there's, you know, 500 nations around somewhere. And <clears throat> I was fortunate enough that I got an understanding who my people are the Anishinaabe, where we are the people around the Great Lakes. They called us the Eastern Woodland Indians. They have names for us. And at 16 is when I kind of, um, kind of, got a sense of who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, claiming that ancestral way of life and and teachings. And in this industry, when I I'm working as a character or on a film, immersing myself with other nations is probably one of the most powerful teachings I have because I get to go be invited mm. to learn from their perspective. And that's kind of the importance of what I do and why I do it is because, you know, Hollywood has romanticized us for so long that they only portray us as Plains Indians when there's so many more others. And we have to recreate these wonderful places of being when it comes to uh, these nations. Like when I did Wind Talkers, they wanted me to play the lead role, but I told them that they had to go ask permission first. And they were wondering like, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. An actor wants the permission of the Navajo Nation to get this great job. Yeah. But I have a huge respect for our nations, and that's one of the requirements for me working in the film. So they called the Navajo Nation, and they came back and said, oh, we got permission. <laughs> but they had one condition that 
they had to have a, a, a Navajo member play the other role. Roger Willie was the one who got cast in it. So, you know, I, I do things differently, but I'm very enamored by who we are as a people and still am today, still learning how amazing our culture was before, you know, we were, you know, allowing people to come into the territories. Yeah, you, you, there's a lot of people behind each of those different nations. Do you feel like they, there's a lot of expectations out of you, and do you feel like you live up to those expectations? Well, I, I don't really put expectations on me. I just follow my heart, and, and you know, what I read is, is, is how I interpret what I want to do next, or it has to connect with how I'm feeling, or how I want to help people mm -hmm. in their project. Do they need uh, to tell the story a bit better than that'll get me in, or they have a story that's just phenomenal. So it's kind of like there's a lot of different layers, but also too, it's like, you know, you have to work. So if I'm not working for a year, I gotta find something, you know? <laughs> yeah. I can't say no to all of them. Mm -hmm. But usually it's kind of like, if you don't see me in a native film, I've usually just, passed on it because it didn't have certain requirements or I felt it just wasn't something that I needed to do and you know it's you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable with where I'm at and who I am so me and my wife decided that this year we're going to write and produce and uh, direct and kind of create our own little little film noir and focus on our perspective because I'm tired of being the high-paid extra <laughs> who dies in every movie. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to bring up Suicide Squad, but you brought it up. What was it like being in Suicide Squad and then not getting to, not getting to live very long? Dude, it didn't matter how long I lived in that movie. You know, being part of the squad, that squad for life, you know. Mm -hmm. The cast in there is amazing. The friendships are forever. But the, the most important thing for me was when I got the call from David Ayer, the director, and he asked me to play Slipknot. And I was really shocked because Slipknot is not Indian. He's a Jewish chemist. Mm -hmm. And for me to say no to that would have been crazy yeah. because here I have an opportunity to take a comic book hero and change him to uh, 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 a more colorful <laughs> character. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to do it. And I'm a huge comic fan, mm -hmm. so eventually we'll have our own comic book heroes and comic book universe or what and whatnot, but, you know, still time for us to open our minds and including us mm -hmm. in this diversity that we're going through. Did you have a favorite comic book character growing up? Maybe one that you would like to play someday if you had the chance? Wow. So my, my favorite would be Turok, the dinosaur hunter. Oh, wow. Okay. There, there was, yeah, after Wind Talkers, John Woo approached me and said, uh, Adam, what character do you want to play? And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> and his producer uh, 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 said, Adam, he wants, he wants to help you in your next movie. What movie do you want to do? And uh, I said, you know, I want to do Dinosaur, uh, Turok, the Dinosaur Hunter. And he's like, oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, Terrence, the producer, said, Adam, we're, uh, we're, we're making a deal with, uh, with the guys who do the, the figurines. And, you know, there's something here. So mm. we actually went into creating a script getting the team together. I was going to do it with uh, Hayden Christensen, one of my friends. And uh, we were going to make Turok the dinosaur hunter, and then it just fell apart. There wasn't a script. It was, it was odd that we were starting this world. And then at the time, the writer just put us fighting in a military base that had no reason at all to why we're there. And it was like, oh. We could do so much with this. But, you know, it didn't pan out. So one of these days, I'm a lot older now. Mm -hmm. The concept is still there. But we'll see, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, 
at the rate I'm going, somebody else is probably going to play it, <laughs> and I'll miss the boat. I'll play the old guy with the uh, with the old wise man or something. <laughs> there you go. Maybe you just need to write it yourself, huh? I don't know. There's there's opportunities with other projects. You know, I don't get too caught up into my um, my my uh, hopes and dreams now because you know I I try to just correctly start with something and finish it as opposed to having 10 ideas. So my wife just finished her first script and it's a, it's a um, psychological thriller and it's on a reservation and it's all native cast. So we're now sending it to people and we'll probably hopefully shoot it sometime soon. But she has a short film that um, we're gonna shoot probably in a couple of months. And uh, she wants to get her feet wet in uh, directing and she's a great writer, it's crazy. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of our new venue and new opportunity and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Right now I have on, uh, online a pay-per-view channel and I'm promoting a film I did called The Watchman's Canoe. So I'm basically, putting out there the same technology as iTunes and Amazon, but kind of not a corporate mm -hmm. structure. I'm basically trying to draw and uh, uh, um, uh, have an opportunity for independent filmmakers to have another outlet, you know? And there's many out there. It's just something that we have to exercise. And one of these days, because... You know, I have a channel that exists like, a, you know, the linear cable networks that eventually I'll have my own TV show on my own platform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it takes a lot of money to do so. But in the environment we in, it's, we're in, you know, there's not a lot for us as native artists. So we have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I well, definitely want to talk about that because you've gone past acting. Now you're, you're working on your own cable network. You got your own film institute. Yeah. You're doing a lot of outside projects. Mm. What, what kind of feeling does that give you to have a lot of control like that? Well, the idea came because I was getting asked a lot by other native artists to say, how do I get started? What do I do? And I was like, man, there's so much to do. Well, the first is motivation. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be asking someone to basically, you know, guide you. You should be on your own kind of dreaming, imagining yourself to be in that position and just go find it. There's schools everywhere. There's colleges, universities, there's playhouses. Move to a different city if you love it that much. And... I needed to create a film institute that catered to the lack of resources for native artists. Uh, um, the, the understanding that when you take a native kid off his reservation and bring him to a different environment, there's a culture shock because now you're in the big city and you're afraid, so you run home. Mm -hmm. And I know that experience because I've been through that where I left to do a movie and I almost quit because I cried every night because of a culture shock, I missed home. There's an environment that's different on a reservation. So I had to cater a program that would cater to that culture shock show. So it's a four month course and I teach you everything about filmmaking. And then you decide which part you wanna be a part of and then I go out and get you a job, you get a degree and you know, further your education in it. And the idea with the film industry, it's something you cultivate for the rest of your life. It's, it's not something like, okay, go build your house now, and that's how you do a three-bedroom house. It's kind of like there's a lot of uh, ingenuity to do what we do. And I'm hoping that from the school that I could build many schools and eventually all our reservations can have their own independent production hub. They can exercise their sovereign, um, um, their sovereign nation um, to create their own economy and have filmmaking a, a platform to sustain their, their, their culture and get back um, 
the teachings or, or sustain their teachings that over the last 200 years, people have been trying to get us to quit being Indian, you know? Mm -hmm. I have a saying that's to be or not to be Indian, that is the question. And everybody's like, well, why do you use it that way? And I said, well, to be or not to me, to be is about respect or no respect. And to be Indian is respect. That's our teachings. Mm -hmm. It's respect. Well, what is your religion? There's no name to our religion. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not, we can't say it's called uh, so-so. You know, it's, I asked one, uh, a friend of mine who does ceremonies in South Dakota, I said, what do we call our, 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 our religion? You know, is there a name? And he's like, uh, American Indian. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. It's like everything's connected. We're all balanced. We're all equal. And we're just trying to be human being. And that's the best part about being here at the John Trudell series is that he was probably the only guy that I, I've ever heard and met that really exercised about being human. We're human beings, but we're lacking being human. Like, there's so much strength in his words. And uh, the Anishinaabe, when you say, uh, I'm Anishinaabe, you're announcing I'm human being. Mm -hmm. I'm not above the deer. I'm not above the animals, the trees. That We're all together. We're all here learning from each other. And I think if you look at society right now, there's somebody out there who's saying that, the higher up being has given us sole authority of the earth to take whatever we want mm -hmm. because we're human beings. It's like, who the hell taught you that? <laughs> yeah. And that's respect. That's honor. That's what are you talking? You know, it's, it boggles my mind. My friend told me that he met someone and they said specifically, like, whatever is in the ground that we find, the, the higher person up says that we should own that and take it. And I'm like, oh, my God, we got a lot of... A lot of work to do. Yeah, dude. <laughs> a lot of work to do. Yeah. So, yeah. I wanted to talk about that as well. Tonight, you're at UNO. You're doing a, a lecture series. And uh, tell me, what kind... You do this a lot. You go on the road a lot. You do these little uh, speaking engagements. What kind of things are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know. But the, the, for me, when, when one is, you know, it's an honor. So the best I can do is speak from my heart and my experiences. I can't tell someone what to do or who to be. That's, that's your place. But what I could do is share my experience to describe how I got to where I am today. I'm not perfect. I've had my faults. But there's a strength and weakness that work together. And I use all of that to be who I am. And once you acknowledge your weakness and, 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 and really live a humble, a humble life of just kind of just being, it's like you, you really find yourself. You find a strength, you know. It's like with, mm -hmm. with my wife, she's a clinical psychologist. So it tells you that I've had a lot of insight of who I am by her observing me. <laughs> yeah. But... You know, in the last four years, she always says, you know, you've grown so much in the last few years that it inspires her. Mm. I don't know what she means, <laughs> but I'm doing something right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, you know, following the intuition of my daughter and seeing that she's growing into this woman or kid, teenager, but she will be this woman. So it's teaching me compassion and an insight that, you know, I, 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 I want our matriarchal society back. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I'm hoping that in the next 200 years, we'll have that mm. and we'll get rid of this patriarchal bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> 
His name is Adam Beach. Uh, make sure you check him out. He, I'm sure you've seen him all over the place, but make sure you head to his Twitter page. He's, he's, check out his Facebook page. Check out his website, his film institute. He's got a lot of great stuff to check out. Um, and if you, hopefully you had the chance to check him out at UNO. If not, keep an eye out. He might be back soon. And also, down the road, make sure you check out Netflix and New Mutants, right? The New Mutants, yeah. New Mutants. i got, I got to imagine you're excited about that one. Yeah, it's going to be good. It'll scare you and entertain you at the same time. I can't wait. I can't wait. Adam, thank you so much for hanging out with me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude, definitely. Take care, guys.